To say that Chowder is a cartoon that doesn't get the appreciation it deserves would be an understatement of the highest caliber. Out of all of the animated shows that Cartoon Network has produced over the years, this is undoubtedly one of their most overlooked series to date. I've always admired the work of C.H. Greenblatt. He's an excellent cartoonist and an exceptional writer responsible for some of the greatest Spongebob episodes of all time. Dying for Pie, I Had an Accident, Band Geeks, and one of my personal favorites, Club Spongebob. So yeah, needless to say this guy knows comedy when it comes to writing in a cartoon, and his humorous side really shines in his very own animated creation, Chowder. Now I've gone on record stating that Chowder ranks as my third favorite cartoon of all time, so it's only fitting that I finally get around to talking about it after such a long time. When it comes to meta humor and fourth wall breaks, Chowder is one of the best. Everyone knows the classic car wash scene where the show drops its animation and cuts to live action footage of the voice actors raising enough money to get the animation back, but the show is way more than just that one gag, and that's why I'm here to talk about my absolute favorite Chowder episode, Schnitzel Makes a Deposit. It's very rare for one of the very first episodes of a cartoon to end up being one of my highest ranked favorites. I can only think of two other cartoons that I'm like that with, those being Action Forest from Unikitty and Power Mad from Fairly Odd Parents. But I'll get into all that as the episode unfolds, so without further ado, let's roll. And so, our episode begins with our favorite walking cinder block, Schnitzel, happily frolicking into the room with the biggest smile on his face. We can get an idea that he's feeling pretty ecstatic given his unusually joyful expression. Considering Schnitzel is normally a character that doesn't necessarily enjoy his job all the time, this is a pretty big moment for him, and this is especially noticeable for someone who's seen other episodes previous to this one. I like the way the episode opens up with Schnitzel as the main focus because it illustrates that this is going to be dominant focused on him. I mean, sure, that was kind of obvious given the title of the episode, but even still, it's just a nice attention to detail. His boss, Mung Dahl, explains the concept of payday to the young apprentice Chowder, and how Schnitzel gets paid each week in exchange for all of the work that he has put in. It's not only a simple concept that sets up how the remainder of the episode is going to play out, but also educational for the kids. As one could likely infer from the title, now that Schnitzel has got his check, he's going to head to the bank and deposit it. And we'll be getting to that in a moment, but first, I need to emphasize just how much Schnitzel gets into receiving his paycheck at the end of the week. Like, he gets really into it. What does he do with the check? Oh, rad, rad, oh, 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 oh. Wasn't this show made for children? Anywho, Monk suggests to Chowder that he tag along with Schnitzel and open his own savings account. However, Schnitzel ain't having it. He's extremely adamant against Chowder tagging along with him because he already has to deal enough with him at work, and he doesn't want to have to put up with him after hours either. That normally spells out bad news for Schnitzel, and he's right to be wary considering how the rest of this episode is set to go. This also brings me to another detail about Chowder that I really like, and that's how the show puts its own spin on real life items. For instance, in this episode in particular, Mung requests to Chowder that he go get his Wiggy Bank. It's analogous to that of a piggy bank in the sense that both are used to hold money, but it's got that more cartoony aesthetic to it in the way Chowder combs his hair to make the money pour out. This is just one of the many shining examples that demonstrates how creative the show can truly get, with even the most basic of things. And so, Monk sends Schnitzel and Chowder on their way so that he can spend some alone time with his wife Truffles. Have fun, you two! Oh, honey, your love muffin needs some kissy kissy. <laughs> Again, wasn't this show made for kids? The music and sound effects really emphasize the implications left behind the character's actions here. I also find it humorous how Schnitzel tries to bribe Chowder off by giving him a cookie to stay back with Mung, only for Mung to counter that offer with something greater. It really emphasizes how much each of them wants him to go with the other. Schnitzel said I could have this cookie if I stayed here. Oh, he did, did he? <laughs> Mung said I could have this pie if I went with you. The fact that Chowder was somehow able to not only warp back inside the shop, 
but also in front of Schnitzel's path as he was walking to the bank, illustrates his hidden talent of bending space and time to his every whim. And so, our characters arrive at the bank and immediately Chowder is awestruck by all of the architecture and the expansive scale of the inside. It's really a sight to behold considering how grand the hallway is when compared to the outside of the building. The columns match the art style that you would expect to see in Chowder, what with the rounded pillar shapes that fill up both sides of the screen, as seen here. The fact that the entrance to the building as seen from the outside is this very small, narrow doorway further complements the massive size of the bank itself, and the immense lion statues are a nice touch that replicate the kind of statues one would see outside of a large-scale bank in the real world. This brings us to the absolute greatest Chowder quote throughout the entire series run. Even if you haven't seen much of Chowder, I'm sure you've at least seen this moment quoted somewhere before. Would you care for a free lollipop? <gasps> Would I? Would you? Would I? Would you? Would I? Would you? Would I what? Care for a free lollipop? Would I? Would you? Would I? Rada rada! Easily one of the show's highest moments. Schnitzel then goes to deposit his check with the old bank teller that drops down from what looks like an oyster shell that falls from the ceiling. I've always found this to be such a strange concept, the way this thing just plummets straight downward from who knows where. It makes me wonder how these guys even get out of these pods, or if they're even able to get out of the pods at all. Maybe they're forced to spend every waking moment of their lives working in this never-ending cycle of labor, taking withdrawals and deposits for all eternity until their demise. That would explain why there's so much security everywhere. Outside of the fact that, you know, it's a bank. The teller requests Schnitzel to go sign the back of his check so that he can make the deposit, so he demands Chowder to hold their place in line while he goes over to the desk. However, knowing Chowder and his short attention span, he instantly forgets what he was doing and gets distracted with the lollipop attendant again, leaving Schnitzel's place in line wide open for several other people to step right in. Another detail that I've always liked about Chowder are the transitions made out of live action materials, such as the fake money depicted here. The show uses items like these along with food to flash forward to a different scene throughout various episodes in the show, and they always seem to be related to the episode in question in some form. For this particular episode, the items just so happen to be money, which is fitting given the context. The rest of the episode then becomes a waiting game, as Schnitzel patiently waits his turn to deposit his check once again so that he can head home and finally call it a day. Meanwhile, Chowder is just devouring all of his lollipops faster than a sawmill cuts through wood, with Schnitzel just patiently putting up with it. Fast forward a bit past a bunch of waiting and the two are almost back to the front of the line. Chowder has finished his lollipops and needs to find something to do while he awaits Schnitzel to be done, but the guards have a very keen eye on him, so he attempts to hide behind Schnitzel's back out of fear from what they could do to him. There is a dog character standing behind them who goes by the name of Ancho, although it's never explicitly stated, that is wearing what appears to be a tie, and Chowder begins to hit it over and over again as he watches it swing back and forth to his own amusement. Of course, Ancho just ain't having that, and calls out Schnitzel for Chowder's uncivilized behavior. Guard! Guard! What's the problem? This man made me feel uncomfortable. You sick monster! Rada! Come on! It's the timeout booth for you! Rada! 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 Ah, oh, Rada! And I absolutely love where the officer calls Schnitzel a sick monster for making people feel uncomfortable. It gets me every time. And this is only the beginning of many struggles that Schnitzel has to go through, as the episode will continue to trickle down this path of Schnitzel getting really close to depositing his check, only to fall right before it's his turn. Anjo's accusation is only the first of these scenarios. As the two sit together in the timeout booth, Chowder goes through a very deep and meaningful dream he had last night, discussing various in-depth themes that could very well explain the meaning of life as we know it. Last night I dreamed I was a bottle of ketchup, and you a mustard. Which is weird, cause usually your manny's my dreams. Why do you suppose that is? So not only is Schnitzel forced to sit through Chowder's dream in the timeout booth, but also wait in line all over again after they're freed, and then patiently sit through this woman's deposit of exactly 200 dollobs in change. That's right change. And you know, 
this makes me sympathize with Schnitzel here. Now, obviously, I get that this is meant for comedic purposes, and don't get me wrong, this is absolutely hilarious, but when applying this scenario to the real world, yeah, don't do this. If there's one thing I want you to take away from this video, it's don't be the green lady. You'd be doing everyone else and yourselves a huge favor. Also, as an added detail for many diehard Chatter fans, you might recognize this wanted poster on the side of the bank teller's booth as a depiction of the blind owl character from another season one episode, The Wrong Customer. So there's a brief continuity nod and trivia fun fact for you. Maybe I'll cover that episode too one day. Who knows? The old man begins counting away, one dollop at a time, while he takes a painstakingly long time to do so. This goes on for a while as everyone just sort of sits and watches, until Chowder gets bored and starts counting out loud to himself to pass the time. As one might guess, this causes the old man to lose his spot, and he has to start all over again. Lather, rinse, repeat, with Chowder causing the elderly teller to lose his place all over again two more times because, as we all know, comedy comes in threes, and at this point Schnitzel is at the end of his rope with how much Chowder has essentially ruined his afternoon. This absolutely destroys Schnitzel, to the point where he literally ties up Chowder and chains him to the floor so that he can't move. I mean, the guy's already shown that he can literally teleport wherever he wants and levitate, so I'm not sure what good this would do in the grand scheme of things. But hey, the old man finally gets close to finishing the green lady's deposit. Ah, fiddlesticks. It's stated by the paramedics that the teller is perfectly fine. He's just simply run out of steam and needs to be rushed to a sauna to refresh and rejuvenate him. The old man is taken away while the green lady gets her deposit handled by someone else, and a brand new booth opens up nearby with a huge line of people following suit. This episode really likes to beat Schnitzel down, making him discouraged and desperate because he just wants to put his money in the bank and head home. But it's not in a way that makes it feel insufferable as seen in other cartoons. All of this keeps the light-hearted comedy tones even with Schnitzel's frustration because it's never overly negative to the point where it's unfair. He's just really unlucky because Chowder keeps screwing everything up for him, which is why he's so adamant against letting him even come along in the first place. However, this line forming is the tipping point because after this happens, Schnitzel begins to go on a huge rant of anger, complaining and bad talking everything that's happened thus far. <laughs> Such language. Funnily enough, his rant goes on for so long that he actually winds up at the front of the line because he was so caught up in his little fit of rage that he didn't even realize how much time had passed. And then, right as he's finally about to get his opportunity to place his paycheck into his account, a criminal appears on the scene threatening a robbery with the ultimate weapon of choice, a plunger. But Schnitzel ain't having none of this guy's shit. Hey buddy, can you hear me? I'm not messing around here, I'll plunge you good. <laughs> Rada, rada. He ultimately saves the day, deposits his check, and finally gets to head out of the bank successfully to go home for the rest of the evening. That is, until Chatter reminds him that they forgot to open his savings account. I really like this ending because it brings everything full circle, and just when you think Schnitzel is finally done, it still isn't over for him. It's the definitive example of how to make a great comedy episode, because it opens with an establishing scene that puts us in the mood to see where this goes, and the remainder of the episode follows suit by cracking jokes left and right all around one simple concept. I find that the best comedy episodes tend to be the ones that are simple. Nothing elaborate or extravagant is necessary to tell a funny joke and Schnitzel Makes a Deposit is just one of the many Chowder episodes that succeeds in doing this. Out of all of the funny moments that this episode has, I think only one or two of them at most do not land perfectly, but aside from that, the other 99% is comedy gold.
Oh, wait, that's a different episode. But that about wraps up Schnitzel Makes a Deposit. Even after watching this episode again for this review, I can safely say this is still at the top of my list for favorite chatter episodes. I love this one so much that if I were ever asked to recommend where one should start if they wanted to give chatter a try, I would suggest this one right here every single time. This is the best way to get a feel for how creative and hilarious chowder can be, and it serves as one of the pinnacle examples that defines chowder's brand of comedy. In fact, if you're watching this video and have never seen this episode or chowder in general, I highly, highly recommend that you give it a whirl as soon as you can because you'll get to see what exactly you've been missing out on. Chowder isn't for everyone, that I can say for sure, but any fan of fourth wall breaks and self-awareness will definitely have something to find here. This is only the first of several Chowder episodes that I would love to talk about, so I can definitely say that this isn't the last time I'm going to be talking about it. But for now, I have a few other shows that I want to get to. Till next time, Shadow Streak, signing off.